Hello, I'm Jared Younger. I'm director of the Neuroinflammation Pain and Fatigue Laboratory, and today I want to talk about tests of inflammation. If you suspect that your pain or fatigue or cognitive issues may be due to some inflammatory process, how do you know for sure? That's what I want to talk about. Now, if you follow my channel, you know that I do experimental tests of inflammation like brain scans, but the things I do are typically not available at most places. Usually there's only two or three places in the world that do them, and sometimes my location is the only one that runs that test. And so it's very hard to get those, and they're not ready for clinical practice anyway. They're, they're experimental research tests. So fortunately, there are things that you can get pretty much anywhere that will generally tell you whether or not you have inflammation and something to um, worry about and inflammation that you need to take care of. So I'm going to go through the list of tests that I use that you can also get a hold of and use. And these are all things that can be run by your primary care physician. And there are other ways to get them as well. And I'll tell you how to do that. Couple of caveats. Uh, number one, as always, this is not medical advice. I'm a scientist, not a physician. Keep that in mind. Uh, number two, uh, keep in mind that scientists are usually a little bit further out than where contemporary medical uh, practice is, and that's by design. Scientists, we like to run things that are new and important and will change things. We don't like to rehash what is already known. So you're never going to hear me say, you know, those candy corn things that are 100% sugar. Well, I just ran this huge study and I found out that if you eat nothing but candy corn for six months, you're going to have horrible health and your body will start to fail. So you shouldn't do that. I will never do that because while that's true and while that's important, uh, no one would argue against that. And so there's no point in um, researching that for a scientist. So the point is, is that if you want contemporary medical advice, there's lots of places you can get that. When you're listening uh, to the talks I'm giving, we're usually discussing things that are a little bit different from current best practice. So just keep that in mind. Now, I run a lot of blood tests in my research. They are very, very important. Any participant who's in one of my laboratory studies has to run a lot of blood tests. And that's because I learn a lot about the people through those blood tests. And probably 35% of cases, we will discover something through those baseline blood tests that will indicate a medical issue that the person didn't even know they have. And that's because we were the first ones to run that particular blood test that indicates the problem. So we find diabetes all the time, thyroid disorders, autoimmune disorders, anemia, all kinds of things that the person didn't know they had. Now, I also run dozens of inflammatory tests. And some of those are common and some of those are more rare types of tests. And I do a lot of inflammatory tests because I believe that fibromyalgia and myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome and long COVID and Gulf War illness, these conditions are driven by sustained inflammation in the body and the brain. So we need to run lots of tests. I think that identifying that inflammation and locating where that inflammation is coming from and stopping it is the key to making the person feel better. Now, I do want to stress that I'm talking about chronic inflammation here, not acute inflammation. So acute inflammation is really important. If you get injured, if you get sick, you need to have an inflammatory response. I'm talking about sustained inflammation. Over months or over years, inflammation is always bad over that time period. Sustained inflammation damages your organs and your tissue, and sustained inflammation tends to beget more inflammation. You've probably heard about inflammation in your gums leading to inflammation in your heart or inflammation in your guts migrating to inflammation in your brain. So we, we have to put a stop to inflammation early on. I wish that tests of systemic inflammation were part of your normal kind of yearly annual uh, physical checkup but uh, that's not conventional medical practice. So you have to ask for these tests generally. So here they are. The number one most important test that I run in terms of understanding inflammation is high sensitivity C-reactive protein or HSCRP. This is a very early part mediator of the inflammatory response and it tracks really well with overall inflammatory activity. What you're looking for 
Uh, these are expressed in milligrams per liter. You're looking for values below one, at least in the United States, that's the values that we use. There are other systems that could be used, but you're looking for a value below one, zero to one. So you basically want no inflammation. If that number gets closer to four, you have a greatly increased risk of having something serious happening in your body due to inflammation. And if it gets closer to nine, you have again greatly increased your risk. And when it gets above 10, you really have something that needs to be figured out uh, pretty soon. Now, interestingly, when all the labs came back online after the uh, pandemic shutdowns and we started running people again, I was noticing that a lot of our healthy controls had CRP values of around 10, which I've never seen in 20 years of research. So we were having trouble recruiting because we can't run healthy controls to have inflammation. Now, again, I've never seen that since, and now it doesn't seem to be the case. So we don't know exactly what was happening. I suspect that it was a lingering effect of either an exposure to the COVID-19 um, illness or vaccines or something related to that. We don't know, but it was weird. And it was definitely something going on, um, but CRP was tracking that. So CRP is great for tracking how your inflammation is going over time. Is it getting better or is it getting worse? And it's so fast, I even look at it daily in some participants and can find it tracks with the good and bad days. It's very, very sensitive. So that's a great one. The second one is erythrocyte sedimentation rate, which is ESR, and that's measured in millimeters per hour. And you want something below 20 on that, if possible. And the higher it goes after that, uh, above that, the worse the inflammation is. So 60 would be kind of a next level, which is kind of moderately high. If you get around 100, you've got really high inflammation that you need to figure out. I like ESR because it's not as variable as CRP. And so ESR is kind of smoother. It doesn't change as much day to day. So it's a good longer term indicator. So I like using CSR and I'm sorry, CRP and ESR together because they operate in different ways and they give you little different pieces of information about your uh, inflammation. I also found that ESR is a good predictor of who will respond well to low dose naltrexone. And so it has some important information in there in terms of what type of inflammation you have. So those are the big two, just based off of my research. Now, if you only can run two, if uh, you don't have good insurance, your physician doesn't, run a, doesn't want to run a huge number of tests, those are the two I would recommend running. Now, if you do have a doc that's willing to do a lot of tests, if you have good insurance and you can run more, there are six other tests that I would recommend you conduct. Uh, first one is serum amyloid A or S, uh, SAA. There's plasma viscosity. There's ferritin, fibrinogen, interleukin-6, and tumor necrosis factor alpha. I'm not going to go over each of those tests. It would take too long. But if you run those six, in addition to the two I mentioned previously, eight tests in total, you're going to have a really good picture of your overall inflammatory activity. And I can say pretty uh, confidently, if all eight of those tests are low, you probably do not have a problem with inflammation. So how do you get these tests? Well, as I've been mentioning, best way is to get it through your primary care provider. These are not expensive tests. Some clinicians may have may be reluctant to run these tests, and uh, that's understandable. Um, you know, there's not really good practice or or precedent of what to do if you kind of have a low, medium value, and so some physicians may want to wait to see symptoms that indicate inflammation rather than just running a lot of tests. Now, that's where my research would diverge from contemporary practice. Um, I think as a scientist that the more data is better. And it does seem to be the case that really, really low inflammation might be indicating something down the road, years down the road. And so I think it's best to identify that and try to get a handle on that inflammation, even if it's pretty insignificant, um, just in case it turns into something more major 
years down the road. So I, I do, I am in favor of running those tests quite regularly, even if someone does feel healthy, I think it's good to take a peek and there's not much downside because they're so inexpensive and they're just normal uh, blood tests. So you can, if you can't get this through your PCP and you want to get the tests run, there are companies that have laboratories throughout the country and you can get these tests run there. I think all eight of these will be available. There's two main companies. You probably know what they are. I don't like mentioning companies specifically, but you've probably seen their cars doing mobile uh, blood draws and you've probably seen their centers. These work, I've had good experiences. I use both of them uh, in a lot of my studies and that's a great option. It's usually more expensive. If you run all eight of those tests, it'll be hundreds. If you only run something like CRP and ESR, it might be below 100, but uh, it, you know it's still probably more expensive than seeing your own uh, doctor. And there also are companies that can do some of these at your house. They'll send you a kit. You can put your blood in the vial, send it back, and they'll run the test. Not all of these tests are available that way, but I do know C-reactive protein and probably a couple of the others. I don't know about ESR, but some of them will be available that way. So that's another option uh, if you can't get to one of those laboratories to have them run. And on those laboratories, by the way, you don't have to have your physician order them for you. You can go online, order the test, and the company will have their own physician review that and prescribe that lab test for you. And you don't have to do a visit to get that test done. So anyway, if any of those tests come up high, now you have to investigate the cause. All of these tests are systemic. They're not specific. They tell you that something is wrong, but they don't tell you what. And that's the next part of it. So if you have inflammation, you have to talk to your physician. Well, okay, what's wrong now? Now, they'll probably order some more tests. They may send you to a rheumatologist or an immunologist. It really depends on your symptoms. They'll come up with the best uh, plan of action to figure out what's wrong. I'll talk about some of those things in other videos as well. So it's easy to find out when you have chronic inflammation, it's harder to find out why or what it is. Last warning is I've been talking about acute inflammation. This is different than your overall immune system. If you want to know how your overall immune system is acting, that's called the complete blood count with differential or CBCD. And you're probably going to get that test at your annuals anyway. And those can also indicate sustained inflammation, but they're a little harder to interpret. There are more components. So that's the things you can do. I just wanted to give you those tests. I use them all the time and I find them very informative. There are much more experimental things that I look at. So if you want to learn more about those and the tests that may be coming down the road in the future, uh, just follow this channel and I will be sure to tell you all about those and give you the data and the new findings that are coming out of our lab. In the meantime, I, I thank you for watching.